I'm going to start with a little discussion of what the Django um, is all about. It's a query builder. You give it some operations, annotations, uh, order balance, something like that, and you get back a query, uh, SQL query. Django OM can uh, map the query results to models, and it also, of course, can save models. This is all pretty standard stuff, but what's missing here is a big thing. It doesn't have an identity mapper, and that's a good thing, I think, because it, you, you really get the results back the query gives you, so, so there's no abstraction in there. So, so, so that's a big distinction to some other ORMs. So the OM works on operations. The operations are higher level than SQL by design. So we don't have a join or group by operations. And that's also a big distinction to many ORMs. So, so you, you really can't do a join in Django ORM. And, and the reason is that uh, the Django ORM manages all the joins for you. And we are going to look a bit how it does that today. And if you are going to ask for a feature that is uh, by design SQL specific, it's not likely going to happen. There are some, uh, some cases where we might do an exception, but for example, join operation or group by operation, uh, it's just not going to happen. Oh, well, maybe we could have a group by operation if we need the uh, actual group by, not, not in uh, SQL terms, but in query terms. What I mean here is that uh, it's natural to do a group by on an aggregation, but we don't really want to expose that it actually means the SQL group by. And the ORM is no SQL by design. We don't have actually 1.7 no SQL backends, I think so. The non real stuff is 1.4, 1.5. But by design, it's no SQL, and actually, it should be somewhat easy to, no, not easy, but not impossible to <laughs> create a backend, <laughs> backend that, that is no SQL, but the big problem is that Django's models are uh, actually relational. The contrib models, for example, permissions and stuff like that, they are relational, so it's uh, just creating the backend won't give you a Django, uh, project where you can use non-relational databases. Okay, what we are going to look today is, uh, demo today is this operation book dot object dot filter author birth date year less than 1981. So, so what we have here is uh, a relation, a transform, uh, a, a fi final field here, uh, a transform and lookup and the value, value we are looking against. And we are going to quickly look how this produces this SQL. Uh, how many of you know the transform stuff in 1.7? Okay, yeah. And how many of you have... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you... Yeah, thanks. Uh, how many of you have used it? So, so yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do a little demo here. So here's what doesn't work right now. <laughs> Actually, I, I need to put on the microphone for this. So, so, so we are going to look. Uh, <laughs> so we have a simple model. It has a it has a date field, and we are going to uh, write a year lookup. So we have a demo just by pi here. So we just set up the environment. And then we are we have a query here that doesn't work right now. So what when we run it, we got an unsupported lookup exception. So we are going to write the year transform. So the first thing is to write a transform class. No. 
So the base class lives in uh, models, Django DB models. Now, then we are going to tell the ORM what its uh, identifier is. So now this lookup year name here matches the year here. Uh, we are going to tell it that uh, tell the ORM that this lookup transforms the date field to a year of the, that date field. So it's done like this. So the year is an integer. Uh, so so here we have that information, and then we need to write the uh, actual SQL for this. So the transform has a value. It's a, uh, called left-hand side here. It's, it's, it's something like a column. It, in this case, it's the date field column, but the transform doesn't know it. It's just something the ORM gives it. So we are going to turn that to SQL. So this self dot LHS, LHS comes from the ORM. Then we are just going to return the SQL. Oh yes. So we are going to inject the uh, LHS SQL here. I'm going actually to push a print statement there so you can see what's actually coming out from from the compiler compile. This actually this compile compile doesn't do anything else than it calls basically the SSQL of the LHS LHS LHS. It could be an other transform or it could be a column or something like that. So now now no. <laughs> Let's see. No, we forgot to reg register it. So we have to tell the models layer that that this uh, lookup exists. And then we have, of course, to push here. So maybe it now works. Let's see. Yes. So that's what we got out. So this. Oh, okay. So, so just right now. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, it doesn't fit the screen. So let's. So, so what we got here, we told the ORM how to uh, do an extract on date field, and well, the ORM managed to do the extract. This is actually, I think, this is actually a quite powerful feature. You can uh, change. Uh, chain this extract so we could do a year modular tree transform and so on and, and the ORM would manage to should manage to uh, produce results for us. This is this is all what the transform stuff is all about. So it's a replacement for dot extra in many cases. I recommend you look up it. It's, this is. I'm excited about this feature. So, so now, now we know how the year transform is implemented, and we are going to look up how the SQL is produced. So, oh, how does it work? Yes, this is the big question today. Example mo models for today. Oh, can you see this? Actually, yeah. Uh, uh, Couple of simple mo models. The interesting thing is we have a relation here, simple relation, and then we have this birthday field. And the query we are going to run, run we already talked about it a bit. The parts in this query are the dot objects. This is a manager of the book model. Then, it's th then there's the 
filter meter, filter method that is implemented on query set. And then we have this lookup string, which starts with a, a relational lookup to the auto model. Then we have the per date field. This is the uh, final uh, concrete field we are going to look up from the models. Then we have the year transform. We saw just how to write. And then we have this less than or equal lookup and the value we are going to look up against. The classes involved in uh, uh, ORM queries are mo models manager. This uh, class actually doesn't do much else than uh, proxy met methods of uh, models that query set. Query set is the user facing API. So it has all the methods you use on uh, ORM queries. But the actual implementa implementation lives in models.sql.query. This is all the stuff about join generation and uh, uh, what the query structure is actually going to be. So th this is actually the meat of the ORM. And then we have the compiler, which takes in the query, and the output is the SQL of the query. It also does value transformations. Uh, this value transformation stuff has changed in 1.8, upcoming 1.8, so, so now we can actually do correct value transformations for custom fields. So if you have had problems with that, go and take a look at the new feature. It's, it's nice. So let's start digging into the methods. We have first a build method. It takes in a uh, argument of auto equals ANSI, for example, and all it does is it converts it to uh, a Q object. It doesn't do much else, and then it calls query dot add Q. The add Q is a kind of a preprocessor for the ORM. It handles uh, nested nested Q objects. This means if you have a bool entry, you have uh, uh, Q this or Q that kind of query. Uh, then the add Q will handle that. It participates in joint promotion. We are not going to talk about the joint promotion today more because it's kind of complicated. So, <laughs> so, so it, it would require an hour long talk itself. So, so sorry, no, no, nothing about that. Actually, these slides contain uh, in the source code, uh, I have written about the joint promotion. So if you want to look up it, uh, just look, at, look in the source and you, you'll find some hidden documentation in there. <laughs> so. So it's kind of the secret cave in the uh, ORM dungeon, so. <laughs> <laughs> Presence in there. Uh, and then we have uh, having an aware split. This happens when you have a field that targets aggre uh, annotations, aggregations in the query. Uh, we are not going to talk about that either today. The actual call, call chain is a bit more complex. We have the actual query here. Then next we go to the uh, manager.filter call. There's some uh, complication here, but actually all it does is it just passes the call to query set dot filter. And this calls an internal metal filter or exclude. The idea is that when you do an exclude, it's actually nothing else than uh, not Q object. So, so they, are, they have a common implement base implementation. Then we have uh, the filter or exclude is going to call the add queue of query. We talked about that. It actually is split in two parts. This is a preprocessor pre uh, pre for add queue, and this is the uh, recursive implementation of it. So it's in two parts. And then the actual uh, lookup handling happens in query.build field. This is the method we are going to look more closely today. So query.build filter, filter 
it does value preparation. So for example, if we have F objects, we, are, we need to add those to the query. So F objects could reference some uh, other fields of, of the query and we, we need to set up joins and stuff like that for the F objects. This is also something we are not going to look more closely today, mainly because the uh, uh, F object implementation is going to change soon. I, I believe it's going to change a lot. Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a big new, yeah, yeah, hopefully so, yes. So there's a big new feature about uh, public API for expressions, and maybe if I have time, I'm going to show you what's I what it's all about. So next uh, build filter uh, fetches the source field. So this means that we are going to look the author and date field from the book module, and we are going to check how that's done. This includes joint generation, so we're going to look that too. And when we have the source field, which was the date field on the author module, then we are going to need need to fetch the transforms and lookups from uh, the, that field. So we are going to also check how that happens. So here's the actual implementation of build fit. What I'm showing you here today is uh, simplified, uh, no, without the corner cases, uh, implementation of the methods, but uh, I'm going to show you quickly what are the, all the corner cases in the build filter. So it's, if you look at the actual code after this uh, uh, talk, you will see that the code is actually a lot more messier than what it <laughs> looks, looks here. So the actual implementation has to, it actually first travels the relations and f field parts of the lookup to get the final source field. So it splits the lookup to uh, auto and date field part and then the transform trans lookup part. So it does that first, then it does value preparations, so the F expressions and so on. And there are a lot of corner cases. For example, uh, doing exact is none, equals none. Lookup is actually implemented as is null is equals true. So, so we have to do that conf conversation uh, inside the ORM. There are uh, corner cases about or Oracle uh, strings, you know, in Oracle, empty string is sa the same thing as null. So that's a corner case we have to handle. Uh, so we also have to check if the lookup is against an uh, aggregate. We are not going to check how that's, that's done today, but it's also something we have to do. Uh, then the next thing is we call setup joins. So we are here we are going to fetch the actual source field. So we are going to check in the model dot meta, fetch the fields and uh, fetch the relations and generate the joins and all, all that stuff. And also there's some cases where we need a sub query. Uh, when you do an exclude against a multi-valued relation, then the ORM has to do a sub query. Uh, then there's joint trimming and joint reuse handling. These are, joint trimming is easy if you have a join where you can, where you have uh, the value already in the left hand side of the join, you can remove its join because, well, you have the value already. Joint reuse is a bit more complex. It's, I'm going to show a bit about that later, but not much. So now we have the source field and we need to ca call build lookup. This is which uh, takes in, in the year and LT uh, less than or equal lookups and knows how to build the lookup instance from that and the source field. And then we have a bit of is now special case handling. So uh, one of the big problems with SQL is that it has this weird three-valued Boolean logic. So, so you have three values for Booleans. So, the, so that's something that's always confusing and making things complex. So, so actually in 
SQL, you have this uh, true, false, and unknown value. And, and unknown isn't, when you say that when, where something is true and where something is false, then you have this, still this case where something is unknown. So, and Django exclude is the complement of uh, filter. So filter matches all those objects where the where condition is true. So when you do an exclude, we have to match all those objects where the uh, condition is false or where it's unknown. So that's that's something uh, messy. So essential methods of the uh, built filter call are setup joins, which takes in the uh, relational and field names and gives out joins and the actual source field for, in this case, it would give us the join for auto and the source field, which is the uh, date field on the birth date field on the auto model. And build lookup, lookup takes in the rest of the lookups and does, does the uh, final transforms, uh, gives us the final lookup we are going to use in the query. So, how does the join gener generation in build filter actually work? This is something uh, I, I guess many people don't know actually, but really it's, it's nothing else than this. It's quite simple when you take all the corner case handling away. There's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, but the problem is people don't uh, get to know that it's actually, this is all that happens. It's nothing more. But but <laughs> there's just, just, just those corner cases that hide the uh, kind of simplicity away. So we are going to look up these methods and what these do. So uh, the joints are generated by PAT info structures. PAT info structure is something the uh, forms communicate the relations back to the ORM. They are in terms of from and to model, so the bat info contains the from model and to model. These are actually the model does meta underscore meta uh, classes. So if you, you have used those in your code, it's actually these classes we use in, inside the ORM. The Pat info also contains the join field, so in our case it's going to be the foreign key, and it contains the target fields. So we have an S here. Yes, actually the ORM is fully uh, fully supports uh, multi-column joins right now. We just don't have any API for well, public-facing API for that, but internally we have everything set up for doing multi-column joins. And then we have a little bit of information about if, if the join is multi-valued. Many to many field is multi-valued multi and then uh, reverse foreign key, key is multi-valued. So, so you have many values probably, uh, or you can have many values on the uh, other side of the join or relation. And then we have this information if the join is di direct. Direct means that uh, we are joining along foreign key and reverse means that we are actually joining against the, in the reverse di direction of the foreign key. So how do we get from this auto and update field to these path info structures? We are just going to look up every name in the Names, so first we, we use the options, uh, that, that's the book dot, uh, dash meta, and use the get field method. We, I'm not going to talk more about the meta uh, implementation, we have a, another talk about that today, so, so there's going to be a lot more about that. Next, <laughs> we have this, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, we have this field fetch it, so we check if it's a relational field. If it is, we just ask the field to give us the path info. So the field tells the ORM which relation it's, which joins actually it needs. The ORM just asks the field for path info structures. We add the 
uh, found path info to the found join path. Uh, we need to get the final field. This is actually, if you are going to do a lookup against this relational field, this is just the uh, uh, value which is on the reverse side of the uh, join. And this is, uh, this is needed, so if we just have an author equals lookup, we have to fetch the source field from the relation, not from the uh, model of the relation. But it's, it's, it's just the same case actually that, that this, that when it's not a relational field, we have final field that is this. Field. Okay, this is, uh, uh, of course, we continue the relation from the next module. So, so what we do here is if we have the author, we go to here, start with the author, author take the author field from the book, uh, underscore meta, options, see it is related, we get the path info from there and add the path to the joins, that's all, nothing else. And then we continue with the update field and uh, then the options will be the options for the auto model and we get the uh, update field from the auto model and we see it's not a relational field and we see that it's our final field and we return that. So set up joins, it's, uh, it first calls the names to path method. It gets a uh, bunch of path infos, so it gets the path, it's, it just reads the paths and creates joins for those paths. So uh, here we see that this is actually not going to work because we should have options here updated because, well, this options <laughs> doesn't update here, but we can get the option, options from the join field. But, but actually what this does is uh, it does a connection from alias to absence of the uh, target table and then it gets joining columns. So, so it's just, uh, in this case, it would be the auto ID on the book module and the ID field on the uh, auto module. So, so it, that's the own condition of the join. Then uh, ask, dot join, query dot join, which does the uh, ugly stuff of joining the, uh, do, uh, storing the actual join in the ORM structures. And then we are going to t tell the uh, build field of which joins we created and the path and which field is the final field. So when we come, come here for, for author and birth date, lookups, then we are just uh, going to do a names to path, create joins. We have just one join for the author model, and then then we return to, return to final field, which was the birthday field. So how does many to many, to many field work? The thing is, it actually uh, just returns two path infos. It's for the ORM. It's nothing more than two for end keys. And this is actually quite nice. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to uh, care about uh, how many to many field is implemented. For the ORM, it's just two for end keys. That's all. So when we, so here, here we can see that the get path info can return many path infos. So, so you can have five joints for one relation if you, if you want. Not that it makes any sense, but. So we are now, let's look the, uh, no, let's just go back here. So, so we have the built lookup. First we uh, have fetched it, the, fetch it, the uh, birth date field and the built lookup method is going just to uh, create a transform and the final lookup for the uh, ORM to use. So it, it works in a way that we have these two lookups here, year and LTA, and we have th this 
LHS, which is a column. So column is one kind of SQL ex expressions, expression. So it, it knows how to turn itself to SQL, and it knows uh, how to uh, uh, it knows to, uh, how to give it transforms by the get transform method, method. So we loop 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 through the lookups. Uh, get from the LHS, it has get transform for the birth date field, it's going to uh, fetch the transform we uh, right earlier. And then, okay, we point the next item. So we are going to uh, call next with the current column as the LHS. So what, what happens here is that we uh, instantiate our transform, and now the transform is another SQL, SQL expression, which knows how to uh, give out transform. So the transform is, for the OM, the transform is just like another column. It knows how to produce SQL, and it, uh, the OM knows how to uh, get transforms transforms from the field or the, or the SQL expression. Okay, so, so we get the year lookup, uh, year transform here, and then we lo loop, and next we get the LTA edge, LTE transform. So this works in a way that we first try to get the transform, we don't find anything, so we are going to that's a lookup, and the lookup has uh, the transform as left-hand side value and the year 1981 as the uh, right-hand side value. So we just return that it's, this is all that happens inside the OM. Okay, there are some uh, error hand handling, but otherwise this is, this is the implementation of how, how we build lookups. So, what we haven't uh, uh, done yet is looked up how some of the corner cases in joint generations are implemented. We are not going to actually look at the implementations, but uh, I'm going to quickly mention what cases are. Joint trimming, I told you a bit of earlier. It's just uh, removing, uh, removing joints we don't need. Joint promotion, it's... Uh, it's something where we decide if we need to use inner joints or left outer joints. And I'm just not going to talk more about it today. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's easier that way. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is something. It's, it's actually, there's, there's just a lot of things to talk about, but it's, it's, you, ha you have to uh, kind of wrap your head around the idea, and then, then it, when, when it clicks, then, then, it's, then it's clear how, how it actually works. <laughs> but, but there's a, so, so, but there's actually, so, so, so the implementation is logical, but, but the logic is something you have to uh, learn a bit before you can understand it. So, join reuse. I'm going to so you a case where joint reuse is uh, needed, or decide, uh, where we have to decide that we are not going to re reuse an existing join. Normally we can always, for four rankings and stuff like that, we can always use existing joins. We don't have to create many joins for four rankings, but for reverse four rankings, in some cases we have to uh, join the same uh, re reverse relation many times. And then there are cases where the Django ORM has to do subqueries, and we are going to look quickly at one example of that. So join reuse. This is the big thing. These are different in Django OM, and this is confusing. What happens here? When you have the calls inside one filter call, you are just going to use one join. When you have them in two different filter calls, you are going to use two joins. This is because this is multi-valued, this range 
uh, this could be a many-to-many -many field. And uh, the documentation tells you why this happens, but just remember that when, when you have uh, many-to-many, many-valued many joins or relations, you have to know if you have uh, if you are going to use filter dot filter or one filter core. This is this is something that has always existed, and and I'm not going to talk more about it. But it's something that is good to know when you are working with the Django ORM. Then we have uh, sub queries. When we do an do an exclude query uh, for technical reasons, Django has to do an sub query. So we don't use joins for <laughs> multi-valued joins when we are doing an exclude query. Nothing more, more about that, but that's something to know that Django ORM doesn't just do, do joins, it also does sub-queries for you. This is actually a big distinction to many other ORMs where you have to yourself write the sub-queries, but Django ORM uh, does them for you. Then uh, we are going to very quickly look at how uh, the query structures are turned into SQL by the SQL compiler. So, so the structures are some structures about joins. The alias map is the most important. It contains all the information from model to model which uh, kind of join is it, uh, that, that sort of stuff. All, all, all the stuff you need to create actually the uh, SQL for the join something on something clause. Uh, then, but then we have tables. This is uh, an ordered list of the tables we use in the query and alias ref count. So this is used because in some cases Django generates joins but doesn't actually use them in the final query, so so we have to keep count of which queries, uh, which joins we are actually using. Then we have the where condition, and uh, this is actually where we store the lookups in. This is kind of another SQL expression. It has S as SQL method, and the compiler is just going to call it. And then there are a lot of other structures related to uh, deferred column loading, uh, select related, stuff like that. So the compiler takes in the query and it outputs rows from the DB. That's, a, that's basically what it does. And the phases in uh, uh, the compiling is set up so in this phase, we are going to generate some joins for order by and something like that. And there's some some uh, some query setup we need to do because uh, otherwise uh, there are some stuff we can't do in inside the query. We have to do inside the uh, compiler. Then we have the execute phase. Uh, we generate the SQL and execute it against the backend, and finally we return transformed transformed rows from the DB. So uh, the compiler just returns rows and the query, uh, sorry, the SQL dot, no, models dot uh, query set is going to turn them into the model objects. So I hope <laughs> I managed to demystify a bit the filter call how the joins are gener generated. That's actually what what we do inside the build filter is just we fetch the uh, field information from the uh, models. Uh, the fields tells us the paths, join paths, and then we set, set up the join paths and that's it. And then, then of course we have to build the final lookup. So, okay, here's <laughs> the stuff I just said. So uh, let's look up this once more. So, nah, let's not look up it once more. <laughs> I, I think I have done that <laughs> a couple of times already. So I could show you a little bit about uh, new uh, expressions API. 
or we could, we could just go to questions. What do you prefer? Expressions. Okay, let's see. So now, secrets. I'm actually using Windows here. <laughs> Oh, uh, my, my own laptop uh, kind of broke, so I'm on, on, <laughs> yeah, I know, excuses, excuses. So, okay, no. so what I have here is uh, something that uses the expressions, so here is our, oh, okay, this stuff is something that is going to be committed soon, hopefully, but isn't actually yet in Django. So we have an, we have an uh, ref SQL object, and this is something that actually knows how to take in lookups in SQL strings and turn them into SQL. So what happens here is that we have a case when name is something, then hate, else wait expression. The ORM and the ref SQL knows how to turn this to SQL where this name is replaced by the column. And of course, this is uh, a parame uh, parameter of the query. So this is something you can do with public API. Actually, when we look below here, uh, we have RefSQL where we have a relation. So you can use also use relations by this. This is not, not something we are going to have in uh, Django itself, but this is just an example application of what you can do with expressions. So you can basically write uh, raw SQL but use uh, the Django lookup style. So this is, this is quite powerful, actually. <laughs> you can do funny things with this. The actual implementation, the hard part is uh, matching the <laughs> actual, uh, these, these, finding these reference parts of the SQL. So that is what we do in the uh, initialization method. After that, we have some, some uh, supporting methods, and the SSQL method is, oh, actually, this is interesting, this resolve expression. So we have found the lookups in the initialization method, and we are just going to look, loop them and uh, add them to the uh, SQL this uh, expression has, and actually how we find the Lookups is we call query dot resolve reference. This is this is uh, how the expression is looked, uh, build how we add it to the query, and the as SQL method it doesn't uh, say much, but it, this actually builds. It takes the SQL you gave the expression something like case when SQL, and it's going to fill in the uh, actual SQL parts. Okay, so I guess uh, what we are doing here, uh, we are adding a new select clause to the uh, select column to the query. The select column is going to be a case when uh, name equals uh, the parameter here, then hate else with and what I mean is that we are going to choose the hate when the name is ANSI, otherwise we are going to choose the hate of the author model. Yeah, okay, so we annotate that to the query and we see that when we execute it, here is the uh, name we are going to annotate it to. And when we execute the query, uh, we see that ANSI has its hate as the case when value 
and Matti has weight as its uh, casement value. So, so what we can do here is we can annotate kind of what we what you can do with extra select. We do it by uh, something that actually works a lot better than the extra <laughs> way. It's it's the, it's actually the goals in goals for me is one of the goals is to get rid of extra. So maybe maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we don't actually have to remove it soon, but we have to uh, make sure we, we can do everything that can be done with extra by uh, actual working code. <laughs> so, <laughs> so extra is kind of a hack where you can uh, uh, do just just push in uh, uh, raw SQL into the queries, but it breaks in some cases and it's impossible to fix. But with with these uh, annotations, it actually works in every case the OM supports. So that, that's, the, that's the thing. Other big thing I want to uh, fix in the ORM is make uh, this, uh, uh, what's it called, G GIS, this uh, geometry, Geo Django uh, public API. Yeah. So, so, so if, you can, if you can make Geo uh, Django public API, it means that we have something Really powerful. You can you can make a lot of things with that. Then, yeah, yeah. We we have a, done a lot of lots already, and there there are some cases maybe where we can't actually fix everything in the uh, database setup and something like that. Or maybe we can someday, but but uh, those are kind of hard. But on the uh, query side, we are actually quite close to having public API. Geo Jungle, so that's that's something I'm looking forward to. So I hope you understand what this expressions what what this expression does. So so actually, what we have in Django is that you have uh, all sorts of uh, expressions you can use uh, functions functions and something like that. So you can have a function uh, lower this string, and then you just try to lower and the uh, reference you are going to lower so so you could have lower lower name so let me so quickly so what i mean no oh, i'm come on too many windows so what we have in django hopefully soon is something like oh i'm going to put that so, so you could do. <laughs> you're, you're clearly better at this. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, So it's this sort of thing you can use with the, you can do with ORM. Of course, then you can do. So yeah. So 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 you so you can do this sort of thing with the expressions. This is this is something we are going to have input built in Django. So, uh, well, well, we haven't decided actually which functions we are going to have in built, but I think lower is something people often want, so so it's uh, likely going to happen. So annotations, uh, expressions are kind of uh, annotations that are not necessarily aggregations. So, so that's what the expressions API is all about. Okay, time for questions. Okay. So you 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 mentioned um, Twister and there's a Twitter client which Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
what's the use case for using one versus the other? I mean, are, are we getting to the point where we don't need more sequel at all? Is there a point at which we can cut back on that, or is there always going to be a need to get more data? Yeah, I think there's always going to be room for both because uh, there are just queries that are really hard to express on the OR. And let's say something like a uh, well, window functions uh, for starters. When, when you, if you want to filter on the value of a SQL window function, you have to do a sub subquery, and it's 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 complex. It it would be nice to support it, but it's going to be really hard. So so there's al always going to be room for raw SQL. But what what I want to do is that if you want to uh, inject some raw SQL, you can do it or some functionality that that doesn't exist in the Django ORM, you can do that easily. So that, that's the use case, not, not replacing raw SQL. There's also a bunch of cases where you've got, um, like in Postgres or whatever, you can write your own SQL functions and that kind of thing, and it's, if, if they fit nicely into the existing ones, then it's fine, but there's still gonna be the case where you've got something crazy you've written and you need to just access it directly, especially if you've got legacy databases. Hi, my, my name is Jens. Uh, I, I, one question about these things, like when, you, when you're doing extra, it's, I guess it's your responsibility as developer to guard for SQL injections attacks. Uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, when you're doing extra, uh, actually you have this select params uh, right, right. attribute you can, uh, or keyword argument you can use. Is there any, like is there any, um, or when, when you do, uh, string interpolation like that I into SQL, I get a bit nervous. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the left hand side, the, the one we always keep left hand side is params. That for params is anything that would be user generated, right? So, for example, so the left hand side is just going to be the names of the names of fields, like right? Things. Right. If you start exposing something to your end users where they can choose the names of fields on your model, then then it's going to be more interesting. well, then you kind of deserve it, don't you? Yeah. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But by the way, one, one thing that isn't that nice in Django is that we use this uh, person S uh, form uh, of param placeholder because it's too easy to mix up and actually use this uh, this uh, SQL injection vulnerable way of f uh, string formatting. So so if we had something else like this, you uh, I mean this, you couldn't actually do a mistake here. Um, I've actually got one quick comment to make. It's not a question. This this particular construct here, where you're doing year less than to equal to, um, I'm, I might manage to get it done for 1.8, but it will definitely be in 1.9. Um, it's part of the Kickstarter project for Contra.Postgres. So there will be, um, at the moment, this year exists as a lookup only. It will then exist as a transform, along with all of the rest of them, and some funky ones like century and decade that only exist on Postgres. Um, cool. Any more questions? Um, hi, I'm Tom. Uh, so the two things we've seen today, the uh, transforms and the expressions, um, you're going to have some of those built into Django, which I assume will work with multiple backends. So what about when I'm, as a user, creating uh, new objects of this type? How do I make them work on more than one database, or can't I? OK, I'm going to actually demo this. It's So, so it's oh, you just do this. It should it should uh, not work. <laughs> or or raise not implemented error on as Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> nah. I I have to kill this first. Mm, yes. Here yeah, we have now this boom. So, so that's the way you do it. So, so uh, all the backends have different names. So, so you just have to know the name, and then you write write the method. And that's actually why we are calling the compiler compile here instead of uh, directly calling the as SQL method. It it just checks that if the if the uh, object uh, has this uh, specialized method for the backend. So. Any more? And I'm going over here first. 
Uh, hi, first, thanks for the talk. With uh, these upcoming changes, uh, would it be any easier to filter inside annotations? For example, in the author and book uh, example, uh, I would like to annotate all the authors with uh, the number of the books, with the count of the books they written last year, for example. And uh, now I think I have to use Aurora SQL for that. Yeah. Or uh, uh, some Python logic. Yeah. I guess you just can do it with the expressions API. One, one, one big part of that is that you can... Yeah, uh, you can do that with it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. One big part of th that is that uh, aggregates are actually just, just expressions. So, so you can do, you can write your own, own aggregate that does exactly what you want. So anything that looked like an aggregate, you can do anything that you could do with an F field before. Um, so I think you can actually, I think you could probably write an update query using an aggregate and update it, update a value like a denom field. Yeah, I've never I think, tested, I but, think but, but it, it might work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's, that's what the API looks like it should be able to do. We should probably yeah. write a test case for that. This yeah. is why we haven't committed it yet. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. That might not work then. I wanted to ask a original question about typing in ZRM because I, I see that um, transforms declare their output field type explicitly, which is fantastic. Uh, and well, back back when I struggled with dates and date times, uh, lots of things were passed around as strings in ZRM, and it was a bit of mess. Uh, and so, uh, well, I, I wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about um, uh, to what extent we have clean per field typing, and maybe what areas are still well <laughs> a bit shady. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, for the date field, I think the problem was that you have to uh, translate the value from the database back to. Uh, yeah, so I had the problem. You apply the time zone. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's something that should be doable right now. Uh, we have this uh, transforms. I think converters fix a lot uh, of conver that. Converters, yeah. yeah. yeah converters API, it's uh, s also something new in 1.8. Yep. So so it allows you to uh, have a converter per custom field type, and you can do everything you need to do in there. So we still have the concept of internal type knocking around, which allows that th the internal type allows us to, so if you create a sub your own subclass of date field, and it, you, it's basically a date field, you're just doing some other Python-y stuff with a two Python method or something, then it will still work the same as far as the RM is concerned, because it's got the same internal type, even though it's a different class. Um, so that's still that's still there, so you can specify that my, my weird type that the ORM can treat as a string can treat as a, as a car field, and the ORM will happily get on with it in most cases. But in these kind of places where you've got transforms and that sort of stuff, that's all related to this specific class. Um, but that's lookups are picked up from sub and parent classes anyway. That's pretty cool because that, that means that for SQLite, we can use conversions of date times in the ORM and not globally as SQLite converters, uh, which breaks like by some of the models. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, I think we can do it. The problem is that it might be a bit slower to do it than uh, them, by, 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 uh, but I, I am not sure if it's a, a real problem because we are using SQLite, so. so. <laughs> Don't use SQLite in performance, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any more questions? Well, looks like we're just about done. Thank you very much, Ansi.